Roger, sorry. All right, guys, so welcome back to the Roger Sarn Podcast, where we talk all things Army, and I'm your host, Sarn Cruz, and today we're talking about counterproductive leadership and the impact that it has on the organization, and without further ado, let's get started. All right, so if you're on YouTube and you're watching me, go ahead and comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let's help grow this channel. I'm putting in a lot of work, and I hope you guys can uh, appreciate that. So let's go ahead and uh, get these uh, get this count up. If you're listening on the podcast, leave a review and a download. All right. Uh, overall, thank you guys. Today, the topic is counterproductive leadership. Okay. So what we're gonna go over is what's on the docket, how to be, how we came to the term counterproductive leadership. We're gonna define counterproductive leadership. We're going to talk about five destructive leadership styles, and then we're going to identify techniques for uncovering and identifying counterproductive leadership as well. So why did we change the term? Because before, if you look at um, ADP 6-22 in the past, it would um, it said it was called toxic leadership, right? And... Toxic leadership became kind of like a buzzword. It was like, oh, he's toxic. She's toxic. Oh, toxic leadership, toxic, toxic. So what you would, back in the day, what you would do is you're talking about that individual person themselves versus of the actual style or the behavior that that person is demonstrating. And that's the big deal about that. So the Army changed the term counterproductive leadership, right, to put an emphasis more on the observable behaviors instead of the leader themselves. And just a note, to be classified as a toxic leader or to be classified toxic, the behavior has to be like reoccurring. It has to continue to happen and it has to have damaging impact on the organization or most importantly, the welfare of the subordinate. Okay. So let's move into what counterproductive leadership is defined as. And this is as under army leadership and the profession, which is six 22. And this is paragraph eight 45. And I quote the demonstrated of leader behaviors that violate one or more of the army's core leader competencies or values preventing a climate conducive to mission accomplishment, okay? So counterproductive leadership generally leaves the organization in worse condition than when the leader arrived, right? What do they typically say in the Army? If you get somewhere, you want to leave it better than what it was. And if you display counterproductive behavior, then that's not going to happen. And the reason why that's not going to happen is because it has long-term effects, on the morale and on readiness. I am pretty sure many of you have already experienced low morale. And when your morale is low, you have issues. It'll turn into health issues, behavior issues. It doesn't matter. And when you have health and behavior issues, ultimately it leads into finance issues because you're you're trying to find a way out to escape. So that costs money, whether it is buying something because it gives you kind of control, whether it's drinking, whether it's splurging, whatever it is, it autumn, it progresses. So this is why it has a long-term effect on, on the morale and the readiness, because if your morale is low, your readiness will definitely be low. Now, here's the thing. All leaders are, are susceptible to displaying counterproductive behaviors at times. Just because Sergeant Cruz one day just because I'm high stress or have a high out tempo or I'm in chaotic conditions, that doesn't mean that I'm counterproductive as a leader. It just means that at that moment I had a a lapse in judgment, right? And sometimes you just want to just do this just to get like a short-term, how do I say it? A short-term result, 
So it it happens. Sometimes you'll be like, hey, I need you to knock this out. And, and, and it's very direct and it's very sometimes rude to, for lack of better terms. And it's not that that's how I am all the time. It's just that maybe in this moment, in this stressful environment, that's how I chose to operate at that moment. Is it um, a, an excuse? No. But this is just an example of a counterproductive behavior for that time. But now if I'm doing it on a constant basis, like demoralizing you and degrading you and talking to you any which way, then that's a pattern and patterns turn into behaviors, right? So understand you could be, you could display counterproductive behaviors at times, but it's not long-term and commanders and leaders have a responsibility to monitor these actions, right? And they take it and they have to take actions in order to eliminate that. So if Sergeant Cruz is walking around, just being counterproductive, disrespecting people, um, not giving people the time of day, not mentoring, not leading, then it's up to my supervisor or someone in my command support channel to get me right to where I need to be. So if counterproductive behavior is allowed to continue, then it just festers and it progresses and then ultimately it's bad on the organization. So let's move into the destructive leadership styles. And there are five. First one is incompetent managers. The second one is affable non-participants. The third one is intensive, insensitive, <laughs> driven achievers. Then you have another one, the fourth one, which is toxic self-centered abuser. And the fifth and final one is criminal. And we're going to go into each one of these. So I'm not making any of these examples up. These are all found in the regulation, right? So an incompetent manager, they possess inadequate, inadequate cognitive or emotional fitness or have an inadequate prior experience to function at their level. So let's stop right there. All that means is that if I'm a SARN first class, I'm a SARN first class and I don't have enough experience in being a platoon sergeant, let's say I'm a platoon sergeant, then I can be an, I can be considered an incompetent manager because I'm not functioning at the appropriate level. <laughs> How many of you have guys have gotten promoted and then the next day they expect you to know it all? Leave that in the comments. I'm pretty sure eight to nine out of 10 of you guys have experienced this, that if someone, when someone's get promoted you and, and you hear it the next day, you're expected to perform. And it's the same thing here, right? Or just I just don't have the the mental capacity or just emotional fitness to even deal with situations. I just buckle under pressure. Okay, let's continue. So they cannot move from a tactical to the strategic level when so required. They cannot make sound decisions on time. So you're trying to get from one level to another, right? So you're going to from put from squad leader to platoon sergeant, then ultimately you'll probably be operations and then you'll move into first arm position. So as you're progressing, you're just not able to progress because you're not there mentally. You just don't have the capacity. And then when someone asks you to make a decision, you're sitting there and you're wondering and you just can't make a sound, a, a, a good decision because you just need time. So especially if you're in, 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 a, in a training environment, getting ready for a combat zone. You have to be able to make split second decisions. And if you're going to be incompetent, then you're not going to be able to make those split split second decisions. And a decision that's kind of like based off of experience and what's worked for you in the past is better than no decision. That's my two cents on that. The next one is affable non-participants. So these leaders are interpersonally skilled and intellectually sound, but incapable of taking charge, making decisions, providing timely guidance, and holding subordinates accountable. They provide minimal guidance, avoid decisions, and are fond of committees, meetings, visitors, and often lack possession, passion, or creativity. Oh, man. I, I'm pretty sure that if you've thought of some leaders, you've thought about this. So they're really good people, but they just 
can't take charge. They won't take charge. They want to be in the cut. They want to be out the way. They don't want to have any responsibility bestowed on them because it's it's just too much for them. They don't want to look bad. And on top of that, they just they're always buddy buddy with their subordinates. So when someone does something wrong, they're kind of they can't give they can't impose any type of um, they can't hold them accountable because they can't impose any punishment because they just they're just scared. Right. And they like what well, well, I like this part where it says they're fond of committees, because when you're in a group setting, you really don't have to make the decision. You can always just either sit back or you can wait till everyone puts their decision out and raise your hand. Whatever it is, you can do that and you can hide behind everyone else. And you can always say it wasn't me. It was it was a group decision. So you can always say it wasn't you because they don't want to be part of it. Right. Um, that is. That's rough. That's rough because when you put chevrons on, when you're a leader, I tell you, I have made many bad decisions. I've also made some good ones, but I've made the decisions and many of them are based off of experience. And this is why you, you get the, this is how we've always done it sometimes because this is how I've operated and it's worked where the, this is how we've always done. It gets a disconnect or gets um, put in a bad light is when you don't listen to put to other ideas from your subordinates, peers, or any, anyone else. Right. So that's, that's where that comes from. A lot of times, at least my opinion. The next one is going to be insensitive, driven achiever. So these leaders are usually brought are usually bright and energetic and consumed by the need for accomplishment and its attendant recognition. They often provide impressive short term results, but create frenzied micromanaged climate. They're also frequently inattentive to the morale of the organization. So this is the <laughs> this is the leader that just wants to be seen that wants to do it all, like, <laughs> let me know if you guys, let me know in the comments, let me know if you guys have ever been in the platoon setting and you guys are sitting around and hanging out and then as soon as that leader walks in, this guy's up, barking orders, doing everything, or everyone's working, but that person wants to start talking and telling everyone what to do when that leader's there. And on top of that, a lot of them just like getting recognized as to, hey, I did this, hey, I did that. Um, and I'm, the the negative portion to that is that they just don't see everyone else. That's why it says they're frequently inattentive to the morale of their organization because they're so focused on themselves that they don't understand that they're creating a bad climate. Um, and if going if gone unchecked or unrecognized or not spoken to, then this. It just gets even worse and worse and worse as they progress through the ranks because they turn into I stole the idea from someone or because you got the guy that lays in the cut. Right. You got the um, the affable non participant participant that may come up with a good idea. And but they're under this individual, the intensive dri driven achiever. The insensitive driven achiever. I'm not sure why I keep saying intensive. Um, and they just every idea that's fed to them, they just take credit for it and. Be that as it may, is it is it okay? Is it not okay? I don't know. That's your opinion. But this can demoralize the non-participant. All right. Next one is toxic self-centered abuser. These leaders are are also usually bright and energetic, as well as goal-oriented and boss focused, capable of producing spectacular short-term results, but are arrogant, abusive, intemperate distrusting and irras irrational. Now, they're typically distrusting micromanagers, never burdened by introspective. So this is the individual that's a very high performer, can get you these tasks knocked out right now. They can get them knocked out. However, they're going to talk about it until they're blue in their face. Any and every school they've been to, they were the best. And in everything they've done, they've done it to the best of their ability. And confidence is lovable. I love me a confident troop. What they're talking about is the individual that just, it's its arrogant, right? And 
the 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 line between confidence and arrogance is different between everyone. Um, if you really like the person and you know them from a long time, they're just confident to you. If you've never met this individual or you just don't like them for some reason, they're going to be arrogant to you. Let's just call a spade a spade. It's all about who you like. But if you have a, which I've never met, <laughs> a um, a non-biased individual, they they can kind of like meter that a little bit better, but I haven't met that yet. But yes, um, they 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 create micromanaging because they want everything to be done a certain way, right? Because they're distrusting, so they're going to be on your butt the whole time, which also just lowers morale. Uh, last one is going to be the criminal. <laughs> These individuals may be energetic, bright, and sometimes charismatic. However, they cheat, lie, steal, defraud, and assault. <sighs> Minus the assault, I think. A lot of us has cheated, lied, and definitely stole. And I and 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 I would say, and I think defraud too. And when and when I say that, I'm talking about motor pool activities. <laughs> I'm pretty sure when when it's time for command layouts, all all these things right here, except assault. We're not talking about assault. Let's get assault. Let's get that out the way. Assault is not what I'm talking about. But cheat, lie, steal, defraud. Right? I'm a cheat because I'm a cut corners. I'm a lie because. I ain't going to tell you where I got it from. Just take it. I'm a steal because I'm tactically acquiring and I'm actually defrauding the system because I'm rob robbing Peter to pay Paul. But all jokes aside, these individuals actually do this, right? They're really high speed for the commands, for, for the support channel. However, in the background, they just do, they're just not good character. They just don't have a good character and they will use intimidation to kind of like do these things and have something on you. So these are the five, these, these are the five um, destructive leadership styles. Now, the final one that we're going to talk about is going to be potential counterproductive leaders. So how do you like identify these potential? I'm not saying that everyone that does this, I'm just telling you what the reg says what ADP 6-22 says, they identify, right? So the the first one is, does the leader surround themselves with yes people? Leaders that are insecure tend to surround themselves with people who are always supporting their ideas. So aka yes people, regardless of their value. And the thing about yes people is that they're often like intimidated to speak up or even disagree or even offer criticism. So any idea to their boss is from their boss is golden. And I'm pretty sure most of this stuff everyone has encountered. So I'm, I'm going to stop saying pretty sure. We've, we've probably encountered these things and we get frustrated. And some of us are probably actually yes people. And hey, you're not the, you're kind of the problem, but you're not the problem that they're identifying. They're <laughs> identifying the person that puts themselves in the position like that. So if I'm the new first sergeant and I say, Hey, I want to enter and I want to hand pick my uh, platoon sergeants and that's what I'm looking for. Then that makes me potentially a counterproductive leader, right? Because I want everyone to say yes and amen to what I talk about and I look good and I make sure that the organization runs my way by inflicting the almost uh, I don't want to say that that they're kind of like being. Um, I don't want to say that they're being intimidating, but intimidation is a factor, right? Because they always have the uh, the evaluations report over you. So the next one is: is the leader unreceptive to feedback or suggestions? So effective leadership requires listening to the suggestions of others. And you got to understand, like, I don't care how much, you know, this new generation, they're smarter. And before, before the new generation, we were the new generation. Cause when I came in, I was the new guy 
I was the new generation and I was the one that, that, that thought I knew it all. Right. I was the one that had no respect for people or I was the one that, that, that think I'm a high speed because my PTs it's, it was always a thing. It, it can always be a thing with each generation. This generation is that they're, they're wild and they don't care or they're unpatriotic, whatever it is that they may label it as each generation has a prior generation. But point is that they know a little bit more than we do because now they got the internet. And they can just Google solution. They got chat GPT that can come up with a solution for them. So if, 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 if the leaders constantly kind of like emphasizing their desires and refuse to consider suggestions um, from their peers or subordinates, they're likely going to create like conflict, dissatisfaction, resentment, and attrition. Um, attrition comes in the form of like people getting out, officers refratting. Resentment is that no one likes you, so... When it's time for your change of command or change of responsibility, no one wants to be there. Dissatisfaction, they're not happy with, with the organization and that bleeds down. So there, there are multiple things that happen when we talk about the unreceptive um, to feedback type leaders. The next one is, is the leader out of touch with subordinates? And this one's rough because a lot of, a, a lot of us just are, you know? A lot of us leaders just are like if you're not down in the in the trenches or talking to soldiers, you're you're going to be disconnected. So and it's sometimes no fault of their own, but it is their fault because they have to put in the effort. So when you see sergeant majors and colonels and, and commanders and and uh, first sergeants, when they come down to like your training areas, that's what they're trying to do. Right. And and. Everyone, when, when the generals come around, everyone wants to make it a dog and pony show. I'm pretty sure that they don't mind it, but I'm pretty sure that they could go without it because they just want to come down and observe and talk and see what it is because they want to see what's going on down at the bottom. Um, but other leaders, when they're doing the wrong thing, they may see that as a threat. So they have to kind of dress it up. So they become danger. They, it becomes a danger for them to be out of touch. Um, with the experience of the subordinates, right? It just like they say bottlenecks. So you get isolated. Like me as a sergeant, I'm, I'm a sergeant first class, and there's like my friend group is very is is small. So I can only imagine a sergeant major or command sergeant major or colonel or general. Like the friends friends group has to be like this, right? So when you isolate yourself, it, it it's it's going to create negative uh decision making it's going to have a negative impact because you don't understand what's going on below you um the next one is when something goes wrong does a leader blame others that's a big one so when leaders play the blame game it can demotivate and it can cause resentment amongst subordinates so what what what's happening here is they're so focused the leader is so focused on their image and what they look like outward of the um, themselves that they will not want to look bad ever. Like they will do any and everything. And that's talking about blaming others. Oh, yeah. Well, I know for sure you guys have heard this. Oh, yeah. Well, I told them to do it, but they didn't do it. Or uh, it's their turn to, to brief the slide. Oh, yeah. Well, this person didn't update the slide. Blah, blah, blah. It's never them. Ever, ever them. And that's a rough one to have because if a real, well, I don't want to say a real leader, it's just my opinion. If a leader is paying attention to words that are being said, and if it's said often, like it, there's one-offs. Like, oh, yeah, I forgot to even, no, heck no, even then, like it should be I forgot to do it. Your, your section should not be there because you're the, you're, the, you're the leader. So if they didn't do it, that means you didn't do your checks. So ultimately, it's still on you. But there are times one-offs that you may not be able to update something or may look bad but if it's constant it's bad and if it's constant and you're blaming others is even worse another one is uh does do others feel worse about themselves after interacting with a leader guys words have impact right is it when someone scores uh a, a, a 560 and then you say um on their pt test and you say is this the best you can do I'll, 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 I'll throw you a, um, a personal one. I came back from battle staff and there was a Sergeant Major cause I got like four coins one. Yeah. I got four coins and I, and I, and I got like an award or something like that at battle staff. Um, when I came back, 
I was we were all talking and it was uh me and a couple star majors my uh, my my meadow and I was talking to them and I was like oh yeah I got coin and stuff like that and I was and this star major says to me so you were you were brown nosing what 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 yeah he I'm like bro what are we doing here like how how we get here so that just turned me off and you do this to a and I've been in for 16 years, but you do this to a soldier that just got here or a soldier that's been in less three, four years, pff, instant turn off, instant. And you, you may not ever get their trust again. Right. Um, the, and when someone says like, that's their job, right. Um, yeah, that's their job. But if they do it, if, if they did a good job, just freaking say it. It's okay. You, you, you don't have, or just don't say nothing. You don't have to be like, oh yeah, that was your job. So you did it. So when I leave, I'm like, whatever. All right, cool. Never bringing nothing up again. So these are things like words have meanings and you have to choose them wisely. And then the last one is, does the leader aim their negativity at people who are less powerful rather than those who are more powerful? So this is normally referred to as kissing up and kicking down, right? So any and everyone who's above them, they they talk to them a certain way and they um, don't want to ruffle any feathers. But as soon as someone's under them, they, they're, oh, yeah, shit stick and all this extra stuff and saying crazy things to them, talking to them any which way. Like, they don't mind their words. And that right there is rough. Because it just shows that you can do it, you just choose not to. Mean meaning that you can be respectful, you just choose not to be respectful. So now it's deliberate, and now you're kind of like really impacting. So leader act one way around their superiors in a completely different way, and and negatively around the subordinates. That just ties into the same thing. Around the superiors, you're you're the best of the best. You're the most courteous, and you don't disrespect. But as soon as they leave. It's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You come out and you just wild out. You know what I mean? Um, that's pretty much it. So in conclusion, counterproductive leadership, it's it undermines the Army's morale and trust against soldiers. I mean, among soldiers. It hampers the organizational uh, effectiveness and mission and ability to accomplish the mission. Poor leadership leads to decreased unit cohesion and effective in com effectiveness in combat situations, right? Because if I'm not willing to die for you, then I'm not going to do the best I can. That's why when people say, oh, I can keep it professional, nah, that doesn't really work that way. If I can keep it professional. Okay, so if I come at 1,700, are you going to do me a favor? Nah, you're going to leave because you're not going to go the extra mile. And that's not professional. A professional would help out when they can my opinion. Um, it can result in increased risk to soldier safety and well-being. And it, addressing counterproductive leadership is critical in maintaining a high, the high integrity of the effectiveness in the military. Sometimes you can't be the one to address it. You need a third party. You need to talk to somebody, sense and sense, whatever it is. Um, but it has to be addressed. And if you see commanders and first sergeants trying to address it, then you got to give them kudos to that because now nah, <laughs> Not many leaders are out there doing it. All right. So appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. Like I said, like, comment, subscribe. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, have you experienced these type of leaders? Which one resonated with you the most? Again, if you're listening on the, on the podcast, go ahead and download and leave a review. Have any questions, comments, concerns, ideas for the show, or you want to participate on the show, we'll call you, interview you. Uh, go ahead and uh, email me at rogersarn at gmail.com or you can just click the link tree in the description and it'll take you to every platform that I have. Follow me on IG, Facebook, TikTok and join the Discord. We're trying to build a community. Myself and Bruner, we're trying to build a community. So if we have questions, comments, um, any type of situations or, or, or we need to, like the other day, Yesterday, I got a, on TikTok, I got someone who asked me about a PT schedule or for ACFT preparation because they're trying to do the MFT. I, I downloaded it, and I'm waiting for them to send me the email, and I'll send it to them. And I, 
that's what that's what it's all about. It's all, it's about build, building a community to help each other out. There are tons of Facebook pages out there. I just want to be one of them as well. Um, and that's it. And as always, remember, you don't have to embrace the suck if you got the right tools in your ruck. I'm Sergeant Cruz, and I'm out. Peace. Roger Sarn.